singing the servant song. So would you please stand as we sing together? Jesus said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a prayer that I'd like to share with you that has been prepared for us by Anglican Overseas Aid. A way for us to come together as we greatly grieve uh, what is happening in Gaza and Israel and to turn to the Lord. Uh, in trust and hope. Heavenly Father, we pray for the many people whose lives have been torn apart by conflict in Gaza and Israel. We pray especially for those who have died, those who are grieving, the injured, those now without food, shelter or medical supplies. Strengthen and support the work of all relief organisations. We pray for the safe release of the Israeli hostages and strength for their families. We pray also for those who have the power to bring peace. May they be touched by a spirit of compassion and kindness. Lord, hear us as we pray in the power of your spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Grant that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in proclaiming the cross to be the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And the kids might like to head on out now to Kids Church 
and uh, that all of our young people as they continue to learn more about uh, God's love for us and grow in their relationship with him. So let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our young people, for their teachers, leaders and helpers and we pray that by your spirit you would be at work during their time together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading today is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high, my mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There was no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On, on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Hear the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 22, starting at the 15th verse. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their, they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and that you will teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your, is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? To show, show me a coin used to paying the tax. They brought him a Demarius and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. For the word of the Lord. Thank you, Margaret. Well, where do you find happiness? Perhaps in money, but more money doesn't always buy more happiness. I mean, I'd be just as happy with 10 million as I would 12 million. <laughs> A wife said to her husband, I had no idea what happiness meant until we had kids, but now it's too late. 
Where do you find true happiness, worth, purpose, value, your identity? Where do you cheer yourself up when things are going wrong? Maybe it's a block of Cadbury. (laughs) Maybe a triple scoop ice cream, some retail therapy, stroll around Eastland. Maybe it's exercise, watching a sporting competition, a nice cold beer or a glass of wine. And these things can give us a moment of happiness and of enjoyment, but it usually fades though afterwards, doesn't it? They don't give us ultimate purpose or identity, perhaps not the happiness that we're looking for. Do you think it's possible to go through something difficult and still have joy and hope? This morning, we're looking at Hannah and her life and her prayer. And when we look at Hannah, I think we see that she finds her true hope and her purpose in God and in being part of God's work in the world. And I hope that today, as we look at Hannah's prayer, and we heard this morning a prayer of praise and thanksgiving and prophetic gospel hope, that we will be able to apply this to our lives and to our prayer life and our faith. But before we look at this incredible prayer of praise and thanksgiving, it's important first to turn back to the chapter that comes before, for we heard from chapter 2, to go back to 1 Samuel 1 and see what led to this prayer of praise. When we go back to chapter 1, we see that Hannah is actually going through a very challenging time. She's crying out to the Lord in grief and in pain. So uh, who here knows a Christian someone who is a follower of Jesus that has had something awful happen to them or a loved one. I doubt there would be anybody that wouldn't put their hand up because we as Christians or God followers for Hannah are not immune to the suffering and the grief of this world, are we? This side of Jesus coming again and the new heavens and the new earth, there's pain and there's challenge and there's difficulty. And it was no different for Hannah. But what we see from Hannah is that it's okay, in fact, it's even good to pour out your heart to the Lord. We see that God doesn't always answer our prayers for worldly hope or ideals or happiness. But we see that deep joy and true hope comes from praying and seeking to live in accordance with God's will and as part of his great work and purposes in the world. Why is Hannah so sad? Why is she weeping? Why is she grieving? Well, she's unable to have children. And in her time and culture, having children was very important. Children were the workforce for your business. Children were your super, your pension. You would literally not have food and a roof over your head without children to care for you in your old age. For your tribe, children were your army. They were the way that you would keep your land from attack from others. And many people of that time would have found their identity and their worth and their purpose in whether or not they had children and how many children. During this time, there was also a culture of polygamy, which never seems to end very well. And in this story, Elkanah has two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. And while Hannah has no children, Peninnah does. And she's not very nice about it. 
In verse 6, we see that she provokes Hannah just to irritate her. Ha, ha, ha. I'm important. I've found my worldly hope. And you, my dear, are a loser. Her husband seems kind. He responds, verse 8, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Don't find your worth and your identity and your purpose in the cultural ideas of having children. Be happy in our relationship. And there's nothing wrong with a loving relationship. That's a great thing. But even this is not meant to be where we find our true identity and purpose. And if you think about it, that's actually still a very strong cultural idea in 2023, isn't it? You'll find your worth and your purpose and your true happiness in a Hollywood romantic relationship. But what does Hannah do? In verse 10 of chapter 1, she turns to the Lord in her grief. And in deep anguish, we read, she prays to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she makes this astounding vow to God. She says, Lord Almighty, if you look on your servant's misery and remember me, and do not forget your servant, but give her a son, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking, Hannah, are you a little bit dumb? <laughs> what is the point of asking God for a child if you will receive absolutely no economic, social or relationship benefit from this? The reference of giving him to the Lord and no razor to be used on his head indicated that he would grow up to be a lay priest. She wouldn't get any benefit that others would have from having a son from this. She wouldn't even get to be there with him, enjoying the relationship with her son on a day-to-day -day basis. Why would she say this? It makes no sense, does it? But I think that Hannah is praying here, not my will be done, not give me a child so that I can find my happiness and purpose in my social and economic status, not my will be done so that I can have relational joy, but your will be done, God. God had promised that through the descendants of Abraham, he would bless the whole world. She would know that by having a child and giving him to the Lord for his service, she would be part of God's work in the world, God's heart and desire to bless the whole world through the Israelite nation. She's not saying, please God, give me what I want so that I can find happiness in this thing that I want. But Lord, may I be part of your will and purposes. And there's something interesting that we see about this prayer. What we see about this prayer is that Hannah doesn't pray get what she wants, and then turn from tears to joy. If you go back to chapter 1, you see she pours out her heart to the Lord. She has an encounter with Eli the priest. And verse 18, before she has had an answer to her prayer, she goes away, has something to eat, and her face is no longer downcast. After pouring out her heart to the Lord and trusting in him, her grief is reversed. She has remembered who the Lord is. She has prayed that she might be part of his work in the world. 
and her grief turns to joy. Now the Lord does answer her prayer. She gives birth to Samuel and we read this incredible song of praise that we heard this morning. Not praising God for giving her what she wanted in a worldly sense, but praising God for who he is and his miraculous, generous gospel love in the world. In this prayer of praise, she begins by praising God, saying, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is lifted high, which was a way of saying, My strength is renewed. There is no one holy like the Lord. She praises God for his holiness and his greatness. And then in verses 3 to 5, she turns to others around her and invites them to trust in God. She says, God knows your thoughts and actions. Don't boast in yourself. Don't try and find your purpose in worldly and cultural ideals. God sees all turn to him. And then in the last part in verses 6 to 10, Hannah praises the way that God works in the world. And she points out how it's so different to our cultural and worldly ideas. Because God is a God that reverses. He takes us from death to life, from tears to joy, from poverty to wealth. The last becomes first. Verse 9, he will guard the feet of his faithful servants. Verse 10, the wicked will be silenced. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. There are quite a few parallels between Hannah's song of praise and Mary's song of praise that we will read and celebrate as we journey through Advent. But what's particularly significant here about Hannah's prayer is that she lived in a time where Israel had no king. She lived during the time of the judges. And yet her prayer looks forward to a time when a king would rule, a time when God's anointed would bring salvation. Hannah's son Samuel would be a prophet. He would be the last in the line of Israel's judges. He would anoint the first two kings of Israel. And he would anoint David as king, who was in direct lineage of Jesus the Messiah, the King of Kings. So what can we learn about prayer from Hannah today? There are three things, and I've got a little slide, uh, that I think that we can apply to our lives today. The first is, it's okay to come to God when you're not okay. It's okay to pour out your heart to the Lord. Hannah shows us in her song of praise that God actually cares about each and every one of us. That nothing is too trivial to bring before the Lord. It's okay to come to God in realness, in grief and in pain and cry out to the Lord. The second thing that we see is that God doesn't always give us what we want. He doesn't always promise that if we pray according to worldly ideals, we will get that because prayer isn't a magic trick. But thirdly, we see that when we pray, your will be done. When we pray that we might be part of God's work in the world and we seek to live that out, in fact, our grief does turn to joy and to hope. Hannah praises God, the God who took her from tears to joy, from death to life, the God who uses the weak things of the world to show his power and his glory. The God who through Jesus' self-sacrificial death on the cross 
offers forgiveness and salvation to the world. And so I think we can learn from Hannah. We can see that in praying to God, in pouring out our heart, God hears us. He cares. We can see that when we pray, not my will be done, but your will be done, we are able to turn from a place of grief to a place of joy in the Lord, of hope in the Lord. We're able to be part of God's work in the world, part of his bringing of life and love and hope. And that is where we find true purpose and true joy. So let's pray that we can, like Hannah, have the strength to say, God, let me be part of your work in the world. That we can have the strength to say, yes, the world says that's where you find happiness or that's where you find joy or that's what will make your life. But we can close the door to those things and instead open the door to prayer and trusting in God and finding our true purpose and identity in him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your miraculous grace and love for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the example of Hannah who turned to you in realness and in her situation and put her trust in you. We ask that likewise you would work in and through us that we might be part of your work in the world that you would help us to pray by your spirit, your will be done. Lord, turn our grief into joy as we trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to reflect on God's word as we remain seated and sing, Here I am to worship.
Let us pray. A prayer from our prayer book for Australia. And forgive me if I repeat the prayer that we've already prayed, the one from Anglican Overseas Aid. Almighty God, ruler of all, in whose kingdom peace and righteousness abound, we pray for those in conflict, especially thinking of Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza. Take away prejudice, cruelty and revenge. Grant that barriers might divide, no, sorry, grant that barriers that divide might crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease. Through Jesus Christ, our mediator, amen. And the second prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the many people whose lives have been torn apart by conflict in Gaza and Israel. We pray especially for those who have died, those who are grieving, the injured, and those now without food, shelter, or medical supplies. Strengthen and support the work of all relief organisations. We pray for the safe release of the hostages and thank uh, you, God, that some have been released. And we pray for strength for their families. We pray also for those who have the power to bring peace. May they be touched by a spirit of compassion and kindness. Lord, hear us as we pray in the power of the Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and its mission. Merciful God, prayer is our anchor. We give thanks for the good news of salvation and ask for blessing on our church leaders, our Archbishop Philip, our Archbishop Philip as he considers his retirement, our Bishop Paul, our clergy here at Mullum Mullum Parish, our dear Vicar Maria, Curate Isaac, Assistant Priests Brian, John and Clive. We give thanks and pray for our former Assistant Priest Karen in her new role as Children's Ministry Consultant for the Diocese of Melbourne. We pray for our health care chaplaincies, our food distributions and give thanks for the recent Synod meeting, praying for good outcomes. Bless, we pray, our parish council, our young people's groups, the Mother's Union, Bible study and English conversation groups, the singers, musicians, and all who maintain cleanliness, beauty, and order in this place. We pray for the Mission to Seafarers, our mission of the month for fundraising, and thank you and pray for the workers who maintain the four centres in Victoria where visiting seafarers can seek companionship and help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation. We thank you for leaders who serve the common good. We give thanks for this land and the diversity of its people. Grant that we may so honour one another that all will be enriched by coming together and freed from despair, poverty and exclusion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves and our community. We pray again for the well-being and safety of the railway workers along our local rail lines. We give thanks for the help given to those of us who live and work here and move around about the area on a daily basis. We give thanks for the beauty of this area, the lovely lakes, the bird life, forests, some of which, some, oh, sorry, which some of us enjoyed on Saturday. We give thanks for our church community, 
and ask for blessing on those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries this week. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for one another. We give thanks that you are the one who brings mercy and wholeness. Comfort and heal, we pray, all who are in pain, need, sickness, sorrow, fear or other troubles. Especially praying for those on our intercession list and those on our hearts. Strengthen those who care for these, your people. We give thanks for our loved ones who have died and are now within your embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer as we come before the Lord to confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in his forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have vowed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sin, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please take some time to share uh, with one another and greet one another. Well, I hope that uh, people will be able to keep chatting and making and meeting new friends over tea and coffee and morning tea after the formal part of our service concludes this morning and we continue on uh, in fellowship together. A very special welcome to anybody who's new or visiting with us today. And we've got in the backs of the rows of seats some uh, little pieces of paper called our welcome cards. And uh, near them should be some pencils. If you can see one of those in your row, uh, would you pick it up for me and just have a look on your row to see if anybody would like it. Uh, Elaine's got one up there. And uh, we'd love it if you're new or visiting, if you'd fill one of these out so that we can thank you for being here with us. And uh, you can also let us know if you'd like to know more about our community. Perhaps you'd like to get our newsletter or find out a bit more about some of the other things that we do during the week. 
You might be interested in joining a Bible study group, and we've got a few of these happening at the moment. I uh, would love to hear from you and help you connect into a group. Perhaps you're interested in being part of our English Conversation Club. Uh, we have moved this to Wednesday afternoons. We now meet on Wednesdays at one o'clock, and you might have seen our lovely big new sign that is out the front of the church. Uh, we hope that you'll invite people to come along so that in a very practical way, we can share the hope of Christ with people in our wider community. Our AGM is coming up soon. Uh, that's the 12th of November at 11.30 a.m. If you're not on the electoral uh, roll, please make sure that you fill in a form beforehand. Uh, if you're thinking about being part of our parish council, uh, we have nomination forms. And it's a wonderful way to serve your church community and be a leader in this church community. So come and have a chat with me or any of the other current parish council members if you'd like to know what's involved and what it's like to serve in that way. Uh, we've got a special event coming up soon put on by Christian Home Care. They're hosting a Salvation Army concert so this will be a lot of fun, a really fabulous concert. That's on Friday the 27th of October, 1.30pm. And it'd be wonderful if you're planning to come, if you could send us a little email or let us know on the communication cards, the welcome cards today, so that we can let Christian Home Care know and that will help them with catering. Uh, but this is a great event to invite a friend to, perhaps a neighbour or a family member. October is the month where we bring in our mission boxes. So if you've got one at home ready to come in, please bring them in. You can drop that at the office or give that to Judith and that would be wonderful. Also coming up soon is Halloween or All Saints Eve. And uh, it's become increasingly popular in Australia in the last few years, hasn't it? Uh, and here as a church community, we like to offer an alternative to the celebration of horror and death and scariness and darkness uh, that is often celebrated in this time and instead offer our youth and our young people a celebration of light and love and hope because we believe that Jesus has defeated death and evil and darkness and there's nothing to fear. Uh, but we're also not um, the fun police and there's nothing wrong with lollies and dress-ups and uh, having fun together. So we're offering this alternative light party for young people and we've got some flyers you might like to give out to people that you know so people can 